Okay, I, in this video I will show how to straighten a threaded rod you, using a, a dial indicator. This dial indicator, this dial indicator I mounted in such a way that the, the wooden stick will move as I turn the threaded rod and the threaded rod uh, rests on two wooden pieces could be anything actually just so that it should be stable enough and the, the threaded rod is bent in various curves and all curves, according to Fourier analysis theory, or Fourier series, can be described as a number of sinus waves and cosinus waves. And there's one primary, primary frequency, base frequency, that is going along the whole rod and that, that's a or harmony you can also call it harmony and there are, but it could also be bent in in sharper bends or higher frequencies so if I measure it like does that set up so if if I would have the double frequency only and I would measure it in this way we go, we would get a zero reading because it's it's not moving in, in the point where we're measuring So if the bend should only be the double frequency, we wouldn't see it. But if we move the wooden stands to the to half length, we would see that double frequency very well. So, but uh, we need to measure it in two places. Uh, if it's bent in the higher region. But it's also possible that the rod is bent on the middle stand now. So you need to measure uh, what is what is equivalent to the cosinus curve of the Fourier series by moving the wooden stands uh, kind of 90 degrees out of phase. You also need to measure it or you can also measure the you should also measure the tripled frequency so you divide the three the rod in three parts equal parts and you put the wooden stands on three different places okay so so you do that the same thing with the with triple frequency you measure it in three places and also you need to measure it in the 90 degrees phase shift and that means you you need to move the wooden stands actually a, a six six of the whole length to measure the the cosinus part of the frequency or curve. So if this part is a sinus, this corresponds to the cosinus part of the curve or frequency. And you need to measure that in all places.
and then you also need to measure it at the ends because that's uh, one one of the peak places if it's curved but you don't you get a, get a support there so you have to kind of move the support to to another place to the other uh, third frequency node okay but it doesn't get straighted by this this was just measuring so to actually straighten the rod you start with the fundamental frequency and you turn it to the highest uh, peak where the dial indicator indicates the highest height and there you just press the rod slightly to bend it in the other direction and then you do that to get until you get basically a zero reading a zero reading of the dial indicator that means uh, you remove the the fundamental frequency of the rod now or the uh, bend I'm not doing this perfectly now I'm just showing the theory or, or how I go about to do this so I'm moving into maximum again and then I try to compensate to get it back now it's a couple of thousand or a hundred millimeters this this dial indicator is a uh, hundreds of millimeter mil millimeters or 10 micrometers so it's so it's not perfect but it's much better than it was before at this fundamental frequency Okay, so I keep on trying to correcting it as much as I can. We're like five thousands or five hundreds off, off uh, center or bent. That's four hundred. It's also important not to spin the rod in one direction only because since it's a thread it will actually move the rod along the side so to, to have a consistent reading you have to have it on the same place of course all the time. So now I'm down at perhaps two two hundreds. And, the, uh, and a threaded rod duct like this is no high precision thing. It's just, I mean, it, it's just a lot of bumps and, and unevenness in the metal. So here I continue to correct the double frequency or uh, bend of the rod. Uh, when, when you're getting up or higher frequencies, you don't need to press as hard because it's... Uh, you get more uh, momentum in bending it since it's a shorter distance between the uh, stands so now I'm down to like 400 So I keep on trying to get the bend completely out of this rod at this double frequency or half half the length of the rod. Oh, there I'm getting quite close. 300s
you also need to watch it so you don't overcompensate it and you move the the peak to the other side of the rod instead. not responding well here but I'm slowly getting there and as you see there's a various kind of imperfection in the rod that causes the dial to jump around so you need to kind of find an average deviation and then I continue with the, the other half the rod for this frequency, the, the half half length. So when I turn this one, it's it's almost perfect in that in that part. And now I do this 90 degree phase shift of, of the rod or, or cosinus part of the Fourier function and it's a couple of hundreds run out. It's good enough for now for a demonstration. And I don't show it here, but I should actually do it on the uh, outer part of the rod as well. Uh, the, the cosinus part of the rod. And now I move on to measure the, the third harmon harmonics of the rod. It's uh, and the higher frequency you go to or the shorter distance you use or, or try to compensate for usually it's more and more accurate and there's less run out. Most of the deviation is at the, the, the base fundamental frequency or, or along the whole length of the rod. So about 200 run out right now. Here I'm using wooden uh, parts for the stand and for the rod that is uh, transferring the measurement to the dial indicator. I should really use um, some kind of met metal instead to get a more precise reading. Now we continue to the next uh, node or, or next part of the rod for this triple frequency word third length on the rod. And I do the final part. We're still on the sinus part of the Fourier analysis or cosinus, whatever you like. And 
it's a couple of hundreds there as well. And then I continue with the cosinus uh, part of the f f uh, runouts. So I need it. I shift the still using a third of the length of the rod, but shifted a six of the rod, which means it's a 90 degrees phase shift. And it was quite good there. Then I measure the part, the last part I can measure easily, easily like this. And it was very good. So let's now I'll see what the total run, run out is again on the full length. And it's pretty good, it's about one or two hundreds. So it's fairly good. That that concludes my instruction. Thanks a lot.